And now, Fairfax Breakfast Club with your host, Basil Lemba. Welcome to the Fairfax Breakfast Club show. My name is Basil Lemba and I will be your host. The Fairfax Breakfast Club is a weekly program. In this program, we bring to you valuable and workable know-how you can use to improve your networking and grow your business. We always start the show with a quote, and today's quote is, the most dominating companies in the future will be the one with high tech and high personal touch, Bill Gates. With us today in the studio, we have someone who has understood this quote very well and is doing just that, using the high tech and personal touch to grow her business. She is the CEO of Reston Limousine, and her name, Christina Jacobsen Boweri. Hello, Christina. Hi, Basile. How are you? I'm doing great, thank you. Okay, good. We're glad to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. Very good. All right, so now, let's get right to it. It's known in this area, and always that you are a great network, networker. How, do you get, how did you get to achieve that status? Well, um, I wasn't always a great networker. In mm -hmm. fact, the first 10 years that I was in business, I never even left my office. Mm -hmm. So the company was growing steadily, and I was very busy in the day-to-day -day activities and felt that my best job was to stay in the office, still answering the phones, taking reservations, dispatching drivers, doing payroll. Um, but over those 10 years, I hired some good people mm -hmm. and delegated those projects to them. Mm -hmm. So by the time the 10 years were up, I was mostly the operations manager overseeing everything. Mm -hmm. And then 9-11 happened, mm -hmm. and the phone stopped ringing, and I was sitting in the office with nothing to do, and I thought, I need to get out of the office. I need to go out and meet people. Mm -hmm. I need to drum up some business. I need to make some contacts. And at the time, we had bought land to build a facility near Dulles Airport, mm -hmm. and we were having zoning issues. And my lawyer said, well, who do you know? And I said, I don't know anybody. Mm -hmm. He said, well, you need to start to get to know people. So. I started attending networking events and I started with the local chamber. Mm -hmm. So the chamber that's closest to my office is the Dulles Regional Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. Started going to those events. I also went to the committee for Dulles. Mm -hmm. I have a, an affinity for flying and airplanes and anything like that, traveling, and so I thought the committee for Dulles would be a great uh, place for me to network. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of business with the airport. We do business with mm -hmm. airlines and hotels and travel agencies. and so. I thought that would be a good place to also network, and okay. um, those are the two organizations I joined and started becoming active in. Very good. Now, what is your biggest challenge? What was or is your biggest challenge in networking? Well, I think now, fast forward 20 years, the biggest challenge in networking is how do you pick which, which events to go to? Mm -hmm. um, networking has changed so much. Ten years ago, it was mostly chambers and associations that provided networking, but today, Everyone is providing networking, including mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. I even have my own networking meeting every mm -hmm. month. Mm -hmm. It's called Sterling Women. Okay. So I think the challenge today, and because of the internet and email, anybody can pretty much create a database and start creating their own networking events. Mm -hmm. And so I would almost say there are too many events, and the challenge is to pick which ones to go to. <laughs> Very good. And what would you consider as your biggest success? My biz biggest success in networking? Mm -hmm. Well, I would say that probably, um, probably an account I got after serving on the board of the Dulles Regional Chamber for four years, mm -hmm. uh, a general manager of a local hotel called me and said, would you like to bid on our business? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I've been waiting four years for this phone call. <laughs> and he said, come on in and uh, make a presentation. And we won a $3 million account. So wow. that's probably my biggest uh, um, exciting story about networking. Of course, there are many other stories I could tell you where um, deals were made or I was introduced to uh, people that could introduce me to other people that I was trying to meet. But that one really sticks out in my head. OK, very good. And you attended one of our expo, and then uh, you talked about networking and talked about the uh, trip you took to China. Yes. And uh, can you tell us a bit more about that? Sure. So through networking, mm -hmm. I, I meet a lot of interesting people, and I've done a lot of public speaking because mm -hmm. people often ask me to talk about my business mm -hmm. to their group. Mm -hmm. 
And in this particular case, I was talking about social media, and uh, I, you know, I'm not an expert, but it's something that I jumped into. I'm an early adapter. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've had a website since 1995. Mm -hmm. I've had a blog since 2004. Mm -hmm. I joined Facebook, I believe, um, maybe 2007. So I'm an early adapter, and by, by being an early adapter and trying all of these things and just trying them out, you, everyone else thinks you're an expert because you've been doing it longer. Mm -hmm. So that led to me teaching classes on social media, which is what they asked me to do in China. And I was invited to go to China by the Global Summit for Women mm -hmm. and uh, talk about my experience. And, and I, I said, you know, I'm not an expert. In fact, I was on a panel with the person who does social media for Dell Computers and Ikea. And I sat there and I thought, what am I doing here? I'm just going to embarrass myself. And at the end of the one hour panel, uh -huh. all of the women in the audience are pretty much early entrepreneurs and they all came up to the podium uh -huh. and they wanted to speak to me. And the reason why is because they could identify with my strategy mm -hmm. as a small business. Mm -hmm. And it was harder for them to identify I with Dell or mm. Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting one. And you happen to be very active. You mentioned also the Sterling Woman. Yes. Uh, which is a monthly event launched under your host, which is very great. We have well over 100 women each and every time. Yes. Can you tell us how that came about and what it is exactly? Well, I wish I could say it was my idea, but uh, they say if you want to be successful in life, you have to hire smart people. Mm -hmm. And I had this wonderful woman working for me. Her name was Kristen Tanzi. Mm -hmm. And she had been promoted several times. And, and at the time, all she, she was so good at networking, and I was not able to go to all the networking events. So I said, OK, I'll, I'll do half of them, and you do the other half. Mm -hmm. And so um, she came to me after a couple months and said, you're sending me to eight networking events each month that are sort of women's networking events. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we promote ourselves to women is that we've figured out over the years that 85% mm -hmm. of the people that book transportation are women. Oh, wow. They're either the secretary or the admin mm -hmm. or the office manager or the HR manager or the wife or the girlfriend. I mean, women tend to be event planners and they tend to be the people that call up and book the cars. Mm -hmm. So we've always promoted ourselves and networked heavily with women. Mm -hmm. And Kristen was going to eight women's events a month. She mm -hmm. says, why don't we just do our own? This way you, c you can save money and not send me to eight events and all those women can come to our event. Mm -hmm. And I said, no way. <laughs> I'm not doing it. She said, I'll, she said she would do plan everything and uh -huh. that all I had to do was show up, uh -huh. get a great speaker, introduce uh -huh. a speaker, and be done with it. Uh -huh. And I still fought her for six months. Uh -huh. Well, finally, she convinced me to do it. Uh -huh. And I said, we'll do it once. And so we picked <laughs> Sterling, Virginia, and we invited women to come to our lunch. And we uh -huh. thought we might get 40 people, uh -huh. and 80 women showed up. Oh, wow. And when I told them this was a one-time event, they all said, no, you have to do this every month. So that's how Sterling Women began. It started mm -hmm. four years ago. And the second month, we had 100 women. And by Christmas, we had 200 women a month coming to our event. And so I believe it's successful because it, it truly is the perfect networking experience for women. Mm -hmm. The reason why is that there are no membership dues. Mm -hmm. So you can come if you feel like it. Mm -hmm. And it's very inexpensive. I mm -hmm. believe it's $49 mm -hmm. to pay for your lunch. Just right. And we provide one hour of optional networking and shopping. Mm -hmm. The reason why we do the shopping is myself as a busy mom, mm -hmm. I don't have time to shop. Mm -hmm. Other busy women, working women, don't have time to shop. And so at this lunch, you can shop for an hour with um, women-owned businesses that are there showcasing their wares in the lobby of the conference center. Mm -hmm. So we shop for an hour, then we sit down for a great lunch, mm -hmm. and then at 12.30 our speaker speaks for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then another one of our favorite things is we always end our lunch with about 50 fabulous door prizes. Uh, that's fantastic. So what other networking do you do? Being that people are listening to you, they know you're working. What else do you do that you can share with them in terms well, of networking? Um, at this point in my career, and having been in business 22 years, mm -hmm. other than Sterling Women, most of my networking is done at the board level, Makes sense. which means that I'm either on the board of a chamber or I'm on the board of a different organization. Uh, and currently, I'm on the board of the Loudoun CEO Cabinet. Mm -hmm. I'm on the board of the Loudoun Education Foundation. Mm -hmm. 
and then I'm on a bank board, Eagle Bank. It's mm -hmm. a wonderful bank. It's mm -hmm. growing and it's trying to get more business in Virginia. Mm -hmm. So they've created this Virginia Advisory Board. Okay. I'm on the board of the Northern Virginia Transportation Alliance, mm -hmm. and that organization is really near and dear to my heart because we're trying to find some solutions to all the horrible traffic out there. Mm -hmm. So that organization works very hard to educate the public about um, the, the, some of the solutions out there, like mm -hmm. for example, widening I-66, mm -hmm. building another bridge to Maryland, and most recently the big initiative was to get Loudoun to accept the Silver Line and mm -hmm. opt-in for mm -hmm. rail to Loudoun. Mm -hmm. So it's an advocacy group and all of us CEOs that are members and on the board, we, we are very active promoting all of these um, wonderful you know, uh, initiatives mm -hmm. that will take cars off the road and make it easier for oh, all yeah. of us. Mm -hmm. Other um, boards that I'm on are a couple of magazines. I'm on the board of Enterprising Woman magazine, mm -hmm. and they're located in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. They only have one board meeting each year, and it's in Florida. And then I'm on the board of Smart CEO magazine. Mm -hmm. And um, those, most of those boards are actually advisory boards, and they meet quarterly, so they don't take up as much time as some of the other type of board opportunities. Mm -hmm. But those are incredible boards where you meet incredible people that can connect you to the people you're trying to meet to get the larger accounts. Mm -hmm. Very good. That, that's very interesting. So now let me ask you this. If you had somebody who has a business or somebody who's starting a business, what advice would you give them in terms of networking? Well, my advice would be if I could look back and think about something that I would do differently, mm -hmm. I would have started networking sooner because, as I mentioned, I never left my office the first 10 years, mm -hmm. and I stayed really busy doing things I probably shouldn't have done. I think it's smarter to hire people to take the reservations and do the dispatching and payroll, hire, hire experts that can do those things for you. Mm -hmm. And as the business owner, you should really be spending more time probably out of your office than in your office, networking and meeting the people that can help you grow your business. Mm -hmm. Very good, excellent. Uh, you also do a uh, lot of support philanthropies, organi philanthropic organization. Can you tell us a bit about that, the one you support and why you support them? Sure. Mm -hmm. I, um, I try and, and give back to the community and mm -hmm. I do that because I feel very blessed. Mm -hmm. I feel as if I'm living the American dream. Mm -hmm. Our company started with five cars 20 mm -hmm. years ago and mm -hmm. today has 170 mm -hmm. and we feel that it's our obligation as a successful business to mm -hmm. give back to the community. Mm -hmm. So because we have limousines, we thought early on that it would be great to donate limousines to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Mm -hmm. So our mission at the company is to promote charities that help sick children. So if a child is sick, or with a, either with the Make-A-Wish Foundation or if they have cancer, we also have a partnership with the Children's Inn at NIH, mm -hmm. and we provide limousines for families that are here visiting their children. So we can take them on a tour of Washington free of charge. And uh, our, our business is actually very seasonal, so we're very busy in the spring and fall. Mm -hmm. And we aren't able to do too much pro bono work during those seasons. Mm -hmm. But in the winter and in the summer, mm -hmm. often we'll, our fleet will be sitting. And it's in those seasons that we try and give back to charities that may need a bus to take children somewhere or maybe some wounded so soldiers somewhere. We try and do what we can in our off season to give back to the community. Very good, excellent. That's fantastic. And uh, you also do quite some speaking. Yes. Tell, them, tell us a bit about that. Well, I, I don't search out opportunities to do public speaking. Mm -hmm. But people tend to ask me to speak because um, as a woman-owned business in a male-dominated industry, mm -hmm. I stick out. Mm -hmm. And I have the largest limousine bu and bus company in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we're the 17th largest in the country. Mm -hmm. So I speak twice a year at the National Limousine Association. Mm -hmm. We have a convention in uh, Las Vegas and one in Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why they're always in towns that have gambling. <laughs> but, um, we won't go there. I usually, <laughs> and I don't gamble, by the way. No, I'm just saying that. So I'll do a seminar on marketing or on social media or maybe how to, how to win bus contracts. Mm -hmm. That's a, a, a very big topic in my sure. industry. Mm -hmm. And then recently I spoke for the American Express Open, asked me to speak to 
Um, they had about 1,400 people attending a conference here in Washington, mm -hmm. how to learn how to do business with the government. So my company grew on uh, government contracts. Mm -hmm. That's really how we grew from five cars to about 80, mm -hmm. was by, by bidding and winning government contracts. So the government has these contracts in Washington, mm -hmm. these shuttle bus contracts, so each different government agency hires a bus company to do an inner city bus route connecting their buildings. So there are many opportunities in Washington that other cities don't have because mm. we're lucky to have the government here. Gotcha. So that's how we grow our business and that is what we're considered experts in is shuttle bus contracts. Um, I'm asked to speak about how to grow, do business with the government. I'm asked to speak as a woman entrepreneur on how I grew my business. Mm -hmm. I often do marketing talks or how to grow your business in an economic downturn is another um, topic mm -hmm. I'm asked to speak on sometimes. Would you like me to tell you more about that idea? Yeah, sure. Okay. So in 2008, as you know, we had the stock market crash. Mm -hmm. And about six months later, I noticed that um, in business, we, sent, we, we tend to feel the economy late. We, we're not one of the first people to feel it mm -hmm. because in the transportation industry, uh, reservations are usually booked about six okay. months out. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So by the next summer, we started feeling the pain. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine, Heidi Cowlett, who owns the Dandelion Patch, told me that her Reston store was really suffering. And I said, well, you know what? I have a lot of clients in Reston. That's where our company was founded, even though we're in Sterling and Loudoun now. Mm -hmm. We originally were in Reston. Mm -hmm. And so for the first time, I went into my database and I pulled a list of all my clients in Reston and I found I had 1,500 clients. Wow. So I told Heidi, let's do something together. Let's become strategic partners and let's create an event mm -hmm. and invite these clients to the event and mm -hmm. you can meet my clients. Mm -hmm. And so we decided it would be a lunch and that we would invite, uh, we narrowed the list down to 250 people. Mm -hmm. We invited 250 people to a lunch but we said only 50 could attend. And then we thought, okay, who else would like to get in front of my clients? And when I say clients, I'm not talking about the CEOs that ride the cars. These clients, again, were the admins and the HR managers and the gotcha. office managers mm -hmm. that book cars for their bosses. Gotcha. The, that was the group that we were inviting to lunch. So then I thought, okay, thanks to networking, I've built this huge network of people that I know, and who in my network would like to get in front of those clients? And that was pretty easy. I came up with a florist, a baker, a spa, a courier company, a delivery company, an office movers. Anyway, I came up with 12 strategic partners. Mm -hmm. So the day came and we took 50 clients to lunch and each partner was able to stand up and pitch their business for a minute. Mm -hmm. And at the end, of course, we did the door prizes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a wonderful success. And all of those strategic partners got a list, with, including email addresses of the 50 clients. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that lunch, they said, well, when are we doing this again? <laughs> and I said, well, this was a one-time thing. <laughs> and they said, no, Deja vu, right? no, we have to do this every month. And what we'll do is we'll move it around to different locations. Uh -huh. So I said, okay. So the first month we did a lunch in Ruston, and then we moved it to Tyson's Corner. Then mm -hmm. we did Herndon. Then we did Chantilly. Mm -hmm. Then we went to Washington. Then we went to Alexandria. So each month I take 50 clients to lunch in a different city here in the metro area. Uh -huh. And in the last three years, I have personally met about 1,500 clients. I've broken bread with them. Mm -hmm. I've created a dialogue with them, mm -hmm. given them my business card, mm -hmm. and it, it's, it's had a huge impact. It grew my business by 27%. Wow. And we learned so many lessons with this lunch. We learned that cu customers just want to do business with people that they know mm -hmm. and they like. Mm -hmm. And what I noticed was when I would stand in the front of that room and talk to my 50 clients and say, you're here today because I want to thank you for doing business with us. Mm -hmm. And you're here today so that I can make sure you know everything we offer. Mm -hmm. We have sedans, vans, buses, and limousines. Mm -hmm. And some of these customers would come up to me later and say, well, we've been using you for limousines, but we didn't know you had buses. True, too. Or we've been using you for buses, and we didn't know you had limousines. <laughs> the other thing that we like to tell them is that we can provide a car anywhere in the world through mm -hmm. a global affiliate network. Mm -hmm. And uh, they love that because we heard from our customers that, that their toughest job is to find a car in New York or Paris uh -huh. or Beijing. Mm -hmm. And now that they know that we do this, mm -hmm which we've told them before, but they didn't really pay attention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the reservations start flowing in the next oh, really? day all over the country. Yes, it's been wonderful. 
That's amazing. Thank you. So that was my best marketing idea ever. <laughs> and, and, and this idea was just something I came up with to help my friend Heidi. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I think it, it shows that when you, when you try hard to help someone else, uh -huh. it comes back to you. Mm -hmm. Wow, that, that, that's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> and how, what, what are we, I mean, how is Heidi doing? Heidi is doing great. Uh -huh. She has four locations uh -huh. and is growing. She's another business that is growing in an economic downturn. Uh -huh. In fact, when I do my speech on how to grow your business on a, in an economic downturn, I mm -hmm. do talk about these strategic partnerships mm -hmm. and finding other businesses that want to get in front of your clients mm -hmm. and doing things together. Mm -hmm. Because in the end, those 12 strategic partners have now become salespeople for my company. They're out selling rest and limousine all the time, mm -hmm. and I don't mm -hmm. have to pay them. And well, you give them a good plateau, a good uh, <laughs> platform. <laughs> yes, you're right, you're right. They're getting paid in a way. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's creating ambassadors for your business mm -hmm. and growing your brand through other people and word of mouth marketing. Wow. Well, that, that's a heck of an idea. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. If you have um, somebody who is, well, I guess you said, do you I suggest that they start networking prior to earlier in their career? Yes. Okay, now, um, I think that that idea could probably work with many other industry. Mm -hmm. You are in strong transition specifically. Yes. That somebody can do it in some other area, I think. Yes. I, I usually recommend that if you're going to start networking, that you pick only three organizations. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, don't do what I do. I belong to seven chambers. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. That's too many. Mm -hmm. uh, just get involved with three organizations. I would recommend that they pick one chamber. Mm -hmm and make sure it's a chamber that is either close to their office or their home. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't pick a chamber near you, you're never going to have time to go. That's true. And with the um, transportation issue we have, absolutely. issues we have. Um, the other group that I would recommend you join is your national association for your industry. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important to stay on Support. top of all the topics, meet people. I get business from limousine companies all over the country. So for me, it's really important to be a member of the National Limousine Association. Mm -hmm. And then the third uh, group that I would recommend would be a charity. So find a charity that you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, I, I was uh, on the board of the Juvenile Diabetes Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, and not really because I have a personal connection, but just because they were one of the first charities that, that invited me to become a strategic partner back in the early 90s. And they would, they would need car service, and instead of paying me, they would invite me to all these great events, and I got to know the board members, and sooner or later, I was offered a board seat. So find a charity that is a, a, a passion of yours. You know, a, their mission is close to home, and donate your time, because the people that you're going to meet there are other business owners just like you mm -hmm. that have similar passions, mm -hmm. and you, you can learn from talking to them, and by donating your time, it'll come back, mm -hmm. and you'll, you'll, you'll be given lots of opportunities. That's interesting. I've never have been put to me that way, but I, I, I like that idea. I like that very much because anybody starting a business or having a business is always, that's why we're doing this show, by the way, because um, I figure that there is knowledge on the subject of networking and successful administration and we created a show to share that information. And I met somebody about a week ago, and somebody just starting a business, and that person has the same question. In fact, I invite them to the Sterling Launch on the next one. Oh, She'll be coming so I can introduce it uh, to her. Uh, well, I'd, li I'd like to share with you another uh, concept that came out of my client appreciation lunch concept. Okay. Yeah, sure, go ahead. And that was that my strategic partners and I, each month after we would have this lunch, mm -hmm. we would sit down and say, you know, what worked today? What went well? What didn't go well? How can we do this better? And how can we get more business from our clients? Mm -hmm. And so month after month, we sat there and strategized. And finally, I said to them, why don't we ask the clients? So we created a focus group with our clients. So quarterly, we invite clients to another lunch. And this time, we say, look, we're going to take you to a great place. We're going to go to a steakhouse. You can order anything you want off the menu. Mm -hmm. But this is going to be a working lunch, and we're going to pick your brain, and we want to understand how you make purchasing decisions. Mm -hmm. that, those lunches are amazing, mm -hmm. and I would love to share some of these, these uh, jewels of information that we learned from our clients. We learned that pricing really is not that important, that mm -hmm. customers are looking for a reliable, 
vendor. Mm -hmm. And once they have a reliable vendor, they don't have time to shop around and, and put it out to bid every time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, by providing good service and being reliable, you can get that repeat business. Mm -hmm. We also learned that uh, the admins were, were very keen on membership rewards programs. So for example, I had a caterer in my group. Mm -hmm. And the caterer was doing these lunches with me for six months and wasn't getting any business. Mm -hmm. When we had the focus group, we learned from the admins mm -hmm. that these admins can go downstairs for example, we were at the Reston Town Center. Mm -hmm. They can go down to any restaurant in the town center, and if they just take six lunches to their office, mm -hmm. they get a coupon for a free lunch. Wow. So we heard there, there was another catering company that offers gift cards for every $2,000 in orders that are made online. Mm -hmm. So we, we were able to get into the minds of our customers and find out how they make purchasing decisions, mm -hmm. and that was a very valuable lesson for us. And so that's another thing I would recommend is that people create focus groups with their clients. Mm -hmm. For our guests, we're getting close to the show over here, but do not worry because we have a second part to this show where Christina will go further and give you some additional information a different strategic partnership information, as well as we get the opportunity to learn more about our own business, which is a rest on limousine. So stay tuned, uh, we'll leave you for now, but part two is coming in very few seconds or the next presentation. Thank you.